So now that we've seen the introduction in the cephalometric analysis, let's see what we can do. Well, the first thing is to find some points. Again, this analysis is a is one analysis. Sorry about. Uh, uh, I think we use uh, Tweed. We use some Tweed points. We use uh, Steiner. We use uh, the Witts analysis, and we use the Down. So it's not a fully complete analysis, but it gives you an idea. As an example, Point Nazion is located right here, and it's the point. It marks a junction between the frontal the frontal bone and the nasal bone. So when you determine some points, then what you want to do is get some planes. So I selected Selanesion. Okay. And I got those two points. So that's the plane. And when you join the two, you get the reference plane Selanesion, which happens to be the reference plane from the Steiner analysis. Once we have the planes determined, well, we have the measurements, and the, the main measurements are skeletal in nature. You measure the projections of the bony parts of the of the face, or the of the or the cranium, I should say. Oh, sorry, of the face more than the cranium. And you have some dental measurements too, where you're going to look at the angulation and some dimensions of projection of tooth structures. So let's look at a SNA. So now you know where we have determined some points and you, we know the plane. So this is the reference plane. Then we trace the NA line and we have the SNA angle, which is a junction between SN and NA, and it gives you the projection of the maxilla in relation to the reference plane of Steiner. So if the, if the SNA is larger than the norm, which the norm is 81 degrees, well, you have a prognathic maxilla. If it's smaller, you have a retrognathic maxilla. Uh, maxilla. We can also use measurements from Steiner. Now we use the NA line as some somewhat of a reference plane, and we take the upper incisor uh, by we bisect the upper incisor, and we op obtain a line. And this measures the upper incisor to an A line. So if the angle is larger than the norm, the tooth is deemed to be procline. And if the angle is smaller than the norm, well, the tooth is retrocline. So what you can see here, there are many, many measurements. Another one to finish would be the width analysis, which uses a totally, ref uh, totally different reference plane, and it uses the occlusal plane this time. So the occlusal plane is right here. It's kind of hard to draw, but that's the occlusal plane. You take point A, which is the point, the most anterior point of the maxilla, and you take point B, which is the most anterior superior point of the mandible. It's right here. This is pogonion, and then you make a perpendicular to the occlusal plane becomes A becomes A prime and B becomes B prime. Sorry if we forgot the, uh, the A. A, is, A prime is here. B prime is right here. And the distance you see right here becomes the width measurement. It's done in millimeters and it will give you the difference in projection between the Sorry, it will give you the difference in the uh, in uh, the, this this here will give you the the difference in projection between the maxilla and the mandible. Thank you.